Okay, let's make this quick. After falling out with Capcom, Mega Man creator Keji Inafune decided to form his own company and kickstart a spiritual successor to Mega Man, which he would call Mighty Number no. 9. Even though he received $4 million, three times the amount he originally asked for, the game has been through hell. Numerous delays and behind the scenes drama has plagued the development, but at the end of the day, all that truly matters is the final product. Is the finished game worth playing? Well, let's make this simple. Not at fucking all. An honest appraisal of one's abilities is the first step on the road toward improvement. First, let's take a look at the look. Along the way, somebody on the development team decided to take a shit all over the graphics engine, and the game went from promising thing was going to look like this to looking like it's straight from a late era PS2 game. You can make the argument that it's trying to be stylistic, but almost every level looks so bland and lifeless that it's hard for that argument to hold any water. Since this is trying to be a spiritual successor to Mega Man, if the game looks familiar to you, then it shouldn't be that surprising. However, while it may look like Mega Man, it winds up playing like a cheap knockoff you'd find at one of those mall kiosks. Enemies are either too stupid or too smart, the music is incredibly bland, the story is simply it's somehow still convoluted, and the boss fights are challenging but not in a satisfying way since some of them are either too easy or just downright cheap. Between the behind the scenes drama and the finished product itself, this became such a big disaster, I'm surprised people haven't renamed the game Mighty Number no. 911. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh. The powers you get are varied and interesting, and at times it's fun to mess around with them. Although it's rare, there are a couple of times when you'll feel like you're playing a proper throwback to Mega Man, and all the mighty numbers have distinct personalities, although some personalities are definitely more tolerable than others. Time to meet the big bug Zipper in the sky! Thanks, Abby! We got strong winds out there today! Be careful! Now that we've broken the ice, time to give you the cold shoulder! Tonight's forecast. A freeze is coming. Other than that, there is hardly anything positive to bring up. The game is boring. Just plain boring. Boring enemies, boring platforming, unnecessarily frustrating bosses, and just overall lazy or rushed art direction and programming have made this one of the biggest upsets in recent gaming history. Nothing about this game feels rewarding, and the only reason I continue to play it is because I felt obligated to. I like Mega Man and Inafune's work and really want to see this game succeed, but it's kind of like watching your daughter's dance recital. You know it's gonna suck, but you have to be there to seem supportive. If you had your name on the four hour long credits, which show all 70,000 people who donated to the project, I am so sorry. Hopefully the internet has learned the lesson once and for all that you can't throw a bunch of your own money behind a project just because it holds some nostalgic value. Hi, I'm Tim Schafer, and 15 years ago, I started Double Fine Productions mostly because I wanted to make a game. A game called Psychonauts. Now I'd like to make another one, and I need your help. God fucking damn it. Overall, I give my number 9 88 sneakers out of 73 tree branches. All that's left is for you to flush number 2. This is an automated YouTube messaging system. Please subscribe to the Game Boys. They are number one. You love the Game Boys. Game Boys is life. You masturbate to the Game Boys. You. Yeah.